What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 8 of the Sky Pillar Sit Down in a holiday themed one of that. If you are not aware, um, I would question what's wrong with you if you're not aware that today is Christmas. So, <laughs> Merry Christmas to everybody that celebrates it. And to all of you that don't, Happy Friday. <laughs> uh, tonight, today, whenever you're listening to this, we're recording this on Tuesday ahead of the holiday schedule. I am joined by my co-hosts, and I'll let them introduce themselves down the line now. Hello, I'm LS. Thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. I'm Sunsun, and I fully expect this episode to be up on Saturday due to technical errors again. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. I don't know what you're talking about. Happy Boxing Day. <laughs> I'm Trent. Happy holidays, whatever day you're watching this. Yes. I completely, we completely lost the opportunity to at least one of us present ourselves with the Mariah Carey song. But feel free, one. Go ahead. Do it. We Go for, for it. Yeah, you we know you. You want to? <laughs> I, I can't improvise. I'm not that good. <laughs> A stage fight oh, now. Oh, Christmas! It's a new episode of the podcast. <laughs> that was horrible. Sorry. No, That's that was. I love that. That was beautiful. <laughs> Bravo. Well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today and taking this time to listen to our podcast on Christmas or whatever day you're listening to it. Happy to have you. Uh, we got some brand new gifts to unwrap for you today um, in our news and notes section followed by the weekly rewind our weekly who's that Pokemon segment and then we'll take a look into week 5 of the Sky Pillar, sit, or Sky Pillar Stadium so with that we'll hop into the news and notes and we will open our first present of the podcast so to speak oh boy <laughs> oh I wonder what it is. <laughs> it's it's a brand new draft stats page. What? What? I wanted a PS5. What? Aww. We have more presents, don't worry. Is it a PS5? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been teasing this for a little bit now. Um, something that we saw. I, I don't remember where I saw this before, but I thought, hey, that's a really good idea. And then I started to put it together about a month ago, and I realized, hey, this is a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> kind of... Hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so we went ahead, and did, went ahead and did the first division, got everything laid out, and then kind of let it sit and gather dust for about a month or so. And then, um, kind of today, with... Uh, yeah, I got to shout him out. Uh rom here um helping me out finish out these divisions we we were able to upload the rest of the stats into this document and present to you i don't know what else to call it other than just shade fuel for the divisions that took forever to draft <laughs> not zapdos not zapdos my goodness yes, so well theoretically not motris because we are like the silver medal i yeah, that surprised me, honestly. <laughs> I, I felt like, I thought Moltres took longer, but maybe that's just because they took forever for that grace period. Oh, yeah. That's true. The but... Moltres grace period <laughs> ended last. It was like, Artic I think Articuno, we finished our draft and then like, within two or three hours of grace period, everybody reacted and they're like, we're done. <laughs> well... Because everyone wa everyone wanted to play their games. Pretty. Like Zapdos was Zapdos was already finishing their week one games, and you guys were still drafting. So yeah, well, pretty much. It's, it's to be expected. For sure. So let me break this page down for you. So what you're looking at here is on the left hand side you have the division versus division ranking. So what that's going to tell you is um, how long each division took as a whole to finish up their draft the total time per pick uh, on average for each coach in the draft the total number of skips that took place in that respective draft and the total number of picks that were left by the coaches for either a moderator or a friend 
to leave in the draft chat when it was their turn. On the far or on the right side of the screen, which is by far the larger pool of data, we have the coach versus coach rankings. I call them rankings just for lack of a better term, but uh, basically what it is is just a breakdown of how everybody did. Um, the first column you see is the total time in minutes uh, from least to greatest, like how long it took for people to draft. Like when it was their turn, the accumulative time from when they were pinged to the time that they made their pick, that's how long they took for their entire draft. Second column is their time per pick. Um, and that fluctuated depending on how many picks each coach took. Rosters were not guaranteed, or they weren't uh, restricted to 11 teams, man or 11 Pokemon mandatory. They were allowed to have some flexibility from 9 to 11, so that skewed some things a little bit. Uh, the third column there is the total number of skips for each coach. Um, luckily, there weren't too many skips. Like, I mean, the number of people that were skipped doesn't run off the page that you're looking at right now, so that's nice. Um, and then... Shout out to Moltres. Yeah. No skips for Moltres. Zero skips. And then Halix ru ruining it for Zapdos. Halix, <laughs> Halix, And then the last column there is the total picks left in absence um, from the most to the least uh, throughout their draft. So shout out to Rom. Taking advantage of the system. Hey! Rom, Magnus, exactly. and Ultra. It, oh. it probably doesn't have anything to do with the fact that I had access to the dock where the pigs were placed. <laughs> so, like, I didn't even need to look for a moderator or a staff member to put it on the dock. I put it myself. So it was hip Caesar, but we can pretend that I didn't have this access and I hustled my <laughs> hustled to give my picks. I think that that's what we're going to go with. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a couple of things that I want to highlight here. One is holy Zapdos. Good grief. I mean, Zapdos going from, you know, electric bird to lightning fast fighting bird Th that wasn't supposed to translate into that division's draft but it did they finished it within a day within 23 hours I don't know if we'll ever this see that again I don't think I have ever seen that in a draft in any other server like this is bonker uh, is bonker is a word just Real quick. <laughs> yep, yep, it's a word. <laughs> but like, and I hope it means what I think it means. Crazy. And like, yes, like it is absolutely crazy. What one single day to do an entire draft is absurd. In even in in like when I look at that. Uh, division versus division ranking I also realized that Moltres was quite fast if you compare to like other drafts in other leagues it was quite fast but it was overshadowed by this abomination of a time that it was Zapdos yeah for I'll sure I'll speak Zapdos as a good division mod <laughs> Boo. by the way <laughs> <laughs> also, I want to take this time to recognize LS. Not only did he join us for the first time on the podcast, hooray to that, he also was the one that was basically the driving force between all four of these drafts. Uh, he kind of basically just took it upon himself, said, hey, I can help you guys out here. I'm in like a 12-hour difference time zone here. I'm awake when you guys are asleep. Awesome, we'll take advantage of that. He uh, basically said, hey, everybody, leave picks with me, and I'll get them in for you, and he did just that. Um, I don't know if... I don't know the math off my head real quick, but looking at that that fourth group on the left side there, the total amount of picks left in absence. I know not all those are left with you, but that's well over 100 picks that you obviously had to plug in. So yeah. You guys are looking at the top. I'm looking at the very bottom. See how mighty Arceus took a hell of a long time for somebody who never got skipped. <laughs> he was he was milking it <laughs> he, he, I think he was single-handedly responsible 
for dragging down the Moltres <laughs> division time. Yo, I remember that actually. Because, yeah, dude. Because it was like uh, the time he took <clears throat> to do his picks were uh, the time limit is 240 minutes, and his picks were like 230 minutes, 139 minutes. So like it's not a skip, but. <laughs> can we can we just like do a, a like a courtesy skip here? <laughs> like, it was almost like we probably should have like it just cut his timer anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's actually I'm almost you know I almost want to pull a Ron Burgundy like I'm I'm not even mad. That's kind of impressive almost. <laughs> <laughs> and Articuno Division left fifty two picks. In total, every single person left at least one pick. Yeah. That, that's great. Don't understand why it took so long. I'm trying to wrap <laughs> my head around that as well. I thought we were a lot well, faster than that. It, it's because the first day was put to a halt when we got to like an IST. No, we had to wait first for Magnus to wake up. Oh, and then right. we had to wait for Vax to wake up. Uh, that's right, oh, I remember yeah, that, that now. Oh, that sucks. The one other stat that's really wild is Lemon obviously took the shortest amount of time, but he also didn't leave a single pick, so that means he was awake for every single pick. <laughs> You're right. That just worked out. That's... He also, also you know, I want to want to mention, he knew exactly what he wanted to coming into this, like two months before, like a month before the draft actually happened. He's like, yo, he DM'd me, he's like, hey, what do you think about this? Like... Yeah, that looks pretty good. He's like, cool. That's what I'm going to draft. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure he was asleep, but he just never got to get his pick because Halas was asleep, so he got that opportunity. <laughs> right. Lemon never sleeps because he sleeps for the week. He's got to finish his draft. That's right. He can't sleep because he's a pincher in. And they set up the electric terrain. So he and you can't sleep in electric terrain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shucks. Oh, I also want to point out, James Z in VGC actually got skipped twice. <clears throat> Did he? Yeah. Well, that's my bad, because I, I filled that one out. I thought there was one where, well... Nah, whatever. Maybe. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, we... Come on, James. Yeah, we are gonna fix this in edit when you guys hear to this podcast we are going to fix this and post it as well for sure and by we i mean how <laughs> maybe <laughs> um also you know as i mentioned this is this is ammunition to um kind of just tease a little bit i i can't i'd, I'd be remiss if i didn't you know, point out Lunar. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't look great when a moderator has <laughs> three skips. <laughs> it, it, it would be something like... I don't remember if Lunar is the a moderator of Lugia. I actually... I rem I know that I am a moderator of Zapdos and that's it. <laughs> but like, it would be a really weird situation to be skipped and himself say, like, uh, okay, skipped. myself, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're gonna finish the draft uh, when everybody, uh, when everyone else finishes the finishes theirs. <laughs> it would be a really weird situation to be in. <laughs> Well, that's if we're just teasing. It's okay. We, we, Lunar was dealing with some in, in real life stuff, so... Um, yeah, that's true. But, uh... Yeah, I just gotta, just gotta tease a little bit. Um, anything else stand out to you guys? I mean, we'll, we'll share this document in the description below, so you guys can check this out in your free time. Um, it, it, I completely did not expect Andre to be a second, because, I don't know, for my memory, he just didn't seem to be picking that quickly but i guess i'm wrong on that no he was on it it was like unless yeah, i 10 minutes. unless i like made some 
major mistake in my time calculations. He was like right there. <clears throat> but Pedra is usually pretty quick mm -hmm. he draft like he does it he already when it's his turn he like has the pick if it was sniped he has the backup if he the backup was sniped he has the backup backup of the backup like he's my real life friend and we talk a lot about draft he's pretty much like that so that doesn't quite surprise me. Definitely helps that he's the wheel as well. Yeah, that does. Yeah. I also want to I want to kind of shout out everybody here because over half of the coaching pool left at least one pick with a moderator or a friend um, while they were at while they knew they were going to be absent. So uh, thank you guys for that. That make, that moves things out or moves things along a lot during the draft, even if it's just. You know, about a matter of like an hour or even a half hour. Like, I mean, it makes a difference and it keeps things moving, keeps people engaged. Um, engagement is a big thing, keeping people around. Um, and when you lead picks and take advantage of the system that we put in front of you, things happen. I mean, look at Zapdos finishing their draft within a day. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. And ironically, and Ironically enough, they were fourth <laughs> in the, right. the living picks. I do want to mention, though, I was the wheel of the bottom wheel, blue gear, and for the first, like, three days, I got one pick in, basically, every single day. So I got two picks the first day, two picks the second day, and two picks the third day. I think we had to, like, put some kind of announcement out to just mandatory cut the timer in half, eventually. Is that, am I remembering yeah. that correctly? Yeah, it happened. I thought so. Which is probably why they have like the most skips. Yeah. Uh, that's mostly Lunar. Take Lunar out. Articuno's not doing too hot. True. Very true. Yo, the get... One other surprising stat. I'm sorry. The one other surprising stat is I'm pretty sure Austin's like um English slash British, so. Him being up there is pretty cool because most people are EST. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I think I think he's yeah he's over in the EU, I believe. Yeah, get your get your stuff together, Lugia and Arded Kuno. No wait, I'm not. And VG shout out <laughs> and shout out to Zapdos and Moltres yeah. for being amazing. I have nothing else to to add. <laughs> Yeah, you get your draft done within two days. That's that's kudos. So props to you guys. All right, we will. Like I said, we'll link this in the description below. Um, as long as I remember to actually do it this time. And <laughs> <laughs> that is your season three Sky Pillar Stadium draft stats. Moving along to the weekly rewind, as I pull up the the weekly recap doc, is there anybody that anything that stood out to you guys from last week? In week four. We're missing a Reggie steal here somewhere. You guys know where that is? Reggie steal on the kill leader. You know, it should normally be like top with like five <laughs> kills. Not here to see. Yeah, very fair. He's been slacking. <laughs> Yo, what happened? They got one kill. I didn't play, I didn't play it against one <laughs> this week. Because if I did, I would be 6 0 like Trent did the other week. <laughs> I'm so the His Reggie Steel. Wait, yeah, his Reggie Steel ran out body press PPs. <laughs> <laughs> and then he brought it back Ooh. in later in the game and went and set up more iron defense. <laughs> like, he couldn't do anything, but they just <laughs> said, I'm just going to click iron defense again. <laughs> oh, you can still sleep talk the body press. Oh, he can, can you? Really? Yeah, you can sleep talk <clears throat> out of PP. That's, I've seen that before. What? I actually did not know that. That's interesting. Is that a showdown Neither thing, or is that uh, like a Pokemon oh, thing? I, I once stalled out a Suicune out of its skulls, then it went sleep talk and it's still 
looked skulled, and I lost because I thought he wasn't able to get skulled. So I didn't classic. know that. Huh. The more you know. The more you know. I kind of wish that you didn't say this with Trent having a uh, Registeel on Moltres Division right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stall everyone. You'd have now. to be able to, uh. You'd have to be able to chip it. So if it's at full HP, it can't actually rest. So you can get free setup. Mm. Mm. True. That's just setup fodder at that point. Nathan Interesting. Zero Aura is still holding it down. Pretty much. That's all that. I think Nathan's got 14 kills of Zero Aura. Is that the, that the, that's the kill leader, right? I'm not speaking out of my butt. Yeah, Nathan got quite a few. He was like like five a week. I swear to God. <laughs> Pretty much. Dragapult, number two, no surprise. Mega Charizard X slowing down a little bit. Latios creeping in. Registeel, Melodic. Yep. Still number six. Would you still my Lodic? My Lodic, my Lodic's still holding it down up there, top ten. You know. It's just Snorlax. No thanks to Baja, but No thanks to, to me this week. Another individual. <laughs> hey, I've been carrying it for three weeks. You know, I gotta take a break. My shoulders are getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Thunderbug. Hey. Uh you can you can thank Thunderbug this week, not Baja. For sure, Thunderbug pulling together our set of the week. I also want to, before we get there, a couple other things I want to mention. Sure, sure. So, G Darm and Kieran were brought three times this week, and neither of them got a kill. <laughs> Same with Mega Venusaur. Both, yeah, Mega Venusaur won 04, Kieran and G Darm won 03, Celsius and Vikeville won 03. You know, Karachi went 0 and 5. Jirachi? Just, what? Yeah, if you look all the way at the bottom this week, it says Jirachi 0 and 5. <laughs> I don't see a Jirachi. Neither do I. Yeah, it's number 284. What? <laughs> I, <didn't see. laughs> I don't see it either. <laughs> Two. Oh, that's total. Oh, that's yeah, total. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Which I guess, is that even... That's, that's... So, that's worse. How, <laughs> so, how does a Pokemon being brought four times and die five times? <laughs> so, so we're on. The, so, Trent's looking at the, this. Trent's looking at the season recap, the season. Uh, so it's been that brought. That can't be correct because I know the one in Zapdos division has been getting quite a few kills. Drachi. Yeah. Oh, this week then. Uh, fact it. Unless you're talking about the previous week. In previous weeks, because I remember Ghost lost to it, like it got six owed by it or something. It's possible that that might, but might have been an extended game, and I just haven't gotten a chance to to double check or to update the yeah. games that were extended out. I'll have to that take a look at that. Actu that's actually a. I now I'm recalling the game because Jirachi was Flinch Jirachi, and it. I am pretty sure it killed the Ghost's Mew in Zapdos Division, okay. if I am not mistaken. Yeah, that's the game I'm thinking of. Okay, I'm looking at my Jirachi stats. I brought it to three games, and it went 0-1. Ouch. I don't How does it make Actually... you feel that my live part is doing better than your Jirachi? How does it feel that your mask Whoa. is doing better than your <laughs> It just hasn't done anything, you know? Three games all in one. doesn't even show up in half my games. It's just a body. <laughs> Make your face or is not doing good. Four it appearances, at? one kill, 11 deaths. Hmm, that's weird. That is. Oh, okay. so, so that so, so I re I rewatched the the match like I didn't rewatch the match right now on the spot, but I recalled the thing about Jirachi and Mew. The actually Jirachi flinched, but Mew died to Toxic. 
and the one that set it toxic was Piloswine. That means that Jirachi can claim that. Get right. wrecked. Right, Piloswine. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Piloswine gets that one. He takes those. Alright, I'll, I'll make sure Jirachi gets a kill this one. Is that a promise? Promise. All right. Can Put it down in stone. <laughs> yeah. I'll check back with you next week for the next podcast. If it doesn't get a kill. I I'm playing slide tomorrow. Don't worry. And there's a clip fable on the other team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll we'll, to, we'll check to check that back, back with that. You know, we should we should have some kind of consequence if he doesn't get it. That's true. What are you going to do? If you lose he's gonna, something. He's going to give one of his was that Pokemon points to one of us. Sure. Uh, I'm okay with that. You guys are already <laughs> so far behind. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Oof. It's a scald burn. Well... I think it's about that time to check in with the set of the week. No longer are the days of Baja carrying my Lotic. No. This week, I decided to hand it over to Thunderbug. Hailing from the division of Lugia. Bringing the Siren to the battlefield. Thunderbug brought a Substitute Coil, Aqua Tail, Skitter Smack set. Now, you may be asking yourself, Ballhawk, what can that do? Well, let me well, tell first, you. you should tell them first some what Skitter Smack does, because I don't know if everybody knows. That's a good point. So, <laughs> Skitter Smack. Is that a move? <laughs> Skitter Smack. It's not a cat smacking you in the face. No. 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 Oof. This is a bug type move with 70 base power, and what it does. Is it lowers oh, it's, the... It's also 90% accurate. It's 90% accurate, so there is room for error, much like Aqua Tail. I think Aqua Tail is 90% accurate as well. Check yeah, out. but you have Coil. Yeah. True, true. Coil ups the accuracy, so that is nullified. So what Skitter Smack does is it lowers the... It's I want to say it's attack? No, special, special attack. attack. Special attack. It's it lowers the... Attack. I had a 50-50% chance of getting that one, and... No, I think it's 100%. I think it's... No, I, I said I had a 50% chance of getting that one correct. Oh, okay. RNG wasn't on my side. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Skitter Smack has a 100% chance of lowering the target's special attack. So, what he did is he brought Milotic onto the field, set up a coil or two, getting ready to attack, and the opportunity allowed him to basically just smite the entire team opposing him with Milotic. Um, yeah, he subbed up on the Celesteela, started coiling, and there was just nothing he could do to break it, because, like, he sent in the Needle King, it takes, you know, it takes out the sub, but you just died to the Aqua Tank. And then after that, it was, it was it. Those, if you look on the left side of the column here, you got three games played, or three games where Milotic was brought this week, picking up five kills, one death, the kill, the five kills all came from Thunderbug. The one death came from, you guessed it, you. me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I definitely wasn't helping the picture for my low tick this week, but Thunderbug definitely picked up the slack. And that is your set of the week. You with my low tick this week was basically me with Charizard X and Celesteela uh, <laughs> the entire season. <laughs> Everybody's caring, and I am hindering. <laughs> well, there's still four weeks, five weeks left. I still have to get my what? first win. Dude, this is the week. This is the week. Five more, five more weeks of me throwing Charizard X in the mud. <laughs> no, no. Oh, but I also do want to bring up. Yeah, he switched it out twice, but. Because that set is so good against Cordy's team, he he basically can bring it in any time, set up a sub, and then start coiling up. Because 
you know, there's no, literally nothing Cordy can do to beat that set with it. No. And another thing that was cool about the game is, uh, Sunsun mentioned it before we started recording, but um, Cordy also brought a Trick Latios. Or was it Latios? It was Lati- one of the Lottie twins with a Trick Scarf. And <clears throat> how, did, how did Thunderbug counter that? Well, he had an Iron Ball Umbreon in the back. Bam! That's a bam. Big old Iron because Ball bam. Did the Umbreon um, also had Trick? Or no. it was like... No, nah. he definitely cool. anticipated um, a Trick Laddie. Because that's probably Laddie's best way of dealing with Melodic or Umbreon itself. Yeah. So, he said, I'll take that choice scarf under like, my Umbreon. You can insane. have this Iron Ball. The, the game eventually got to a point where they were playing like mind games with each other because Grampus Spin from Blastoise was one substit- or one hit away from breaking the sub and if Blastoise manages to break the sub then he can actually Toxic the Melodic which can actually bring him the victory. So it was like a 50-50 where uh, he kept, was it, uh, Thunderbolt kept subbing even though he already has a sub, but the Blastoise just one uh, rap has been. I remembered seeing a sub after sub. I couldn't remember what it, what the reason was, but n- now I know. <laughs> that was that was some fun <laughs> mind games. Also, if you're unaware what the Iron Ball does, I got I feel like I gotta get this get this little nugget in there. This this Iron Ball nugget in there. It. Uh... <laughs> I believe it. It halves your speed. So it's basically no, it always makes you it always makes you move last. So it's basically like market. so it's basically like full incense and lagging tail. Uh oh, well, actually no, you're right. I was thinking of lagging tail. Yeah, I yeah. think it halves your. Yeah, but it's, it's like it getting paralyzed. Has, uh, it's like getting paralyzed without the full para effect. It also has a strongest. Like, thing. Uh, it it doubles your weight too. I think. I it? Oh yeah. I I yeah. roll ball halves halves your speed. I think you're confusing. Lagging. Yeah, yeah, I was. Oh, it also makes you. Um, it also makes you grounded. Grounded and that's right. I think it makes it makes you heavier as well. Or maybe that's. I I think there's an item like that because there's there's a float stone which halves your, your weight. I think yeah. Iron Ball also doubles it. I could be wrong on that one, though. So I'm not sure. So don't rely on that in your prep yet. Hmm. Hey, it also means that you know the Ladios is now grounded. Right. Right. Man. So, you know, you can spam Earthquake all you want. That was a fun, fun game. Those are some, those are a couple really good sets from Thunderbug last week. I, I didn't really bother going and watching. That was, that was part of the reason why I felt comfortable not watching any other game from last week, just because when, when I got word of this happening, that was it. <laughs> there was no competition for set of the week. So congratulations. I mean, I, I think this one just wins it. Yeah. And that is your week four recap. Brought to you by. No, I'm just kidding. I wish I could do that. Right, Shadow Legend. <laughs> <laughs> brought to you by Audacity. <laughs> this this I video wish. is sponsored by Audacity. I wish. Well. Also, Rom, you made a comment earlier in that segment. Where you talked about running your your Mega Charizard X and Celesteela into the the mud. Um, this yeah. is a this is a Christmas well, this is a this is a holiday Christmas episode. You ran it. You've been running him into the snow. <laughs> that, well, actually, not Celesteel anymore because it's flying. I decided to I decided to change my rocket to the Excalibur. And I'm I'm quite I'm quite hopeful that it will be a really good change. It fixed some problems that I was having with my team, but now I'm gonna use Skarmor and Heliolisk with the extra points. I'm kind of very excited about it. That sounds that sounds. I fun. can't wait. 
I can't wait to drag them in the snow as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna do much better with those. Let's see more of your style. Sure. So, the because the this campaign this season set. I wish I was in. Yeah, this is. It, it happens. It's. You'll rebound. You can't win them all. No. You can't win them all. Like there are some, there are some things that even if your team is good, like it doesn't click, and it happens. Yep. Exactly. I got second in PRs and I still can't win a game. Hey, it's coming. It's coming. I was supposed to make playoffs this season. That's what I told myself. <laughs> hey, you know you can go on a run. You can still do it. I think. Yeah. If there was there was there was a league. All my remaining games. You could do it, dude. I I won. So okay. Last, there was a group of seasons that I played before this, where I started off 0-3, and I think I was like a minus 9 differential, went on a run <clears throat> all the way to the championship game, and that is where we were presented with no zone. <laughs> wait, wait, was that season that this happened, the iconic Magnus Zone? Yes. <laughs> Dang. That was that was Arceus smiting me, saying, "No, this run is too good. This is enough. You're done." This is this is the destruction of an <laughs> entire anim anime arc. Yes. Like you you started in the ground, and you get up, try to fight, and uh, like an anime hero. And then, the moment you were supposed to claim Victor, it happened. Make the zone happen. Like, I understand why you hate him. But hey, don't don't listen to that part. Listen to the part getting to that point. It can happen. <laughs> I can dream. It's definitely possible. Y yeah, I have faith. Like, you, you can bounce back. Unless you face a Magnezone in the finals. Unless. Sorry. If you're, if I you're don't know if there's a Magnezone, Magnezone, but if there's a Magnezone in Zapdos, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> As you should be. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, I went off a tangent there. Ellis is going to win this week, I'm calling it. If I lose <laughs> if I lose that, I lose a point. There. Aha, uh -huh, I can throw. <laughs> <laughs> Insider trading. <laughs> Now I got skills oh, again. Your oh, check your DMs. <laughs> <laughs> They're already working out. In a, there yet. They're already working out a deal. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Trent. And uh, oh boy, let's move into it. Don't spoil it. <laughs> yeah, I made sure this time we're not spoiling anything. <laughs> not today, no sir. Are All we right. safe to watch stream? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good. Can you see my screen? Watch. Yes. Yeah. Can I click? You can yeah, you're it's click. all good now, this it's, time. It's safe. I can see it. Uh, it's loading. All righty. Okay, it's loading. This is what we don't really need any visuals do. for this one. I think, so. I think we're having the exact same issue we had before. Yeah. That's so weird. This sounds... This sounds... Let me try... Let me try this one more time. Oh, no, I... I <laughs> all right how about... no mine's oh yeah i see it okay, all right I cool see it. i see it <laughs> all right cool now it's time for who's that pokemon for what <laughs> just wait just wait he already played it. I always love that. Oh, wow. Well. Alrighty. Hit number one. This Pokemon works with Santa to give presents to everyone what around the world. I be. already know it. Daddy All right. Bird. Nope. Oh, wait. It's not Daddy Bird? Duh. Nope. Oh. Nope. What did LS say? What's up? What did LS say? Stantlaw? Nope. 
well, well Stad? Nope. Stadler? Stadler, yeah, that's what he said. Is it Saucebook? Okay. It is not, no. Nope. Is okay. it? Nope, is this it was Saucebook? revealed in the Pokemon anime. Oh. Is oh, it... is it Jinx? Oh my god. Yeah, it's Jinx. You you gave you <laughs> wow. gave a second hint with the first hint. I, I didn't expect you guys to get get it from the anime. It's crazy. Dang. Well, I'll go on to hit number two then. <laughs> Generation one, the only way to catch this Pokemon is in the Japanese version of Pokemon Blue and Seafoam Islands. What did you just do, Trent? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck was I could have made this so much harder if I just <laughs> didn't just say the Pokemon anime. This is... does limit only the first 151 and probably limit it to like maybe 10 because only 10 right. can be found on Steam Foam. Like, I, I, I guess, I, even though it's like 10, I still wouldn't have gotten it. I would have said something like, <laughs> uh, I don't know what I would have said. And the like, signature it... move is Lovely Kiss. And it's Jinx. Like, there it is. Like, happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gave a, you gave a, like a ultra hint and uh, <laughs> uh, you gave a ultra hint like the first one. <laughs> I mean, in Trent's I'm, defense, I'm, I had I had no idea. <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten it until he said lovely kiss. Son, son, do you watch the anime? <laughs> I mean, I think we've all watched the anime. Yeah, yeah. Like, I do not remember the Christmas episode, though. Neither did I. It's been so long. Yeah. I do remember, though, back in, like, third grade, just glued to the TV, like, no, no, one more hour. There's another episode of Pokemon. There's two more. <laughs> it's but, such a great show. Like, it's been so long since I've seen like the uh, the Gen ones. I actually like the Digimon more. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> but like, I also like the Pokemon. I wasn't that but, big of a fan of the Digimon uh, myself, honestly. I I actually I actually liked a lot of Digimon, the anime. I do. I, I do. No... Oops, go ahead. Sorry. I but I have absolutely no clue if Ezix if a um, game of Digimon actually Ezix. There is. Like, I t funny that you mentioned that. There was somebody that was showing me they actually have like full fledged games, kind of like Pokemon, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do with that said, I do remember actually watching the, the Digimon anime a little bit as a child. But I don't know those gen like back when like. Pokemon was owned by Cartoon Network. I think those were the golden years. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of the, <laughs> the Disney Pokemon. Wasn't well, it like Cartoon Network now and it used to be like Warner Bros or whatever it was? I thought well, it was I thought it was always Cartoon Network and now it's Disney. Is it I Disney think now? Black and white. It was no it changed to Cartoon Network at black and white, I think. Are you sure? I could be making things up, but that's my memory of it. So the thing is, like, maybe right. The the Pokemon anime and also the Digimon anime. Like when I was kid, I was a kid. It we didn't had like Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon or channels like this. Where back in the early two thousand. At least my house. So I watched the equivalent of the PBS Kids that mm. you guys have, but it's more national. And there were some like uh, some very rare shows of, uh, from other countries, and Pokemon happened to be one of them. So like I didn't watch it from Cartoon Network. I actually didn't know it had Cartoon Network. I've watched it in TV Globinho. The Brazilians in the realm, we all know what it is. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Rest in peace, TV Globinho. With that, I think uh, now is a good time to move on and look ahead to week five.
I don't have too much to look forward to other than just <clears throat> getting back on a on the winning side, suffering not only my first loss of a Pokemon this past week, but I actually lost my first game. Need to get back on the winning ways. Can you teach me those winning ways? If I knew them myself. I, <laughs> I feel like I've just gotten <laughs> lucky. Like, this is the first time all of my sets have worked well until last week. But, like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Like, so, also, this is just kind of like a weird personal personal note here. A bit of a weird stretch for me. So, I'm in three leagues total right now. Sky Pillar Stadium. WPF, which that season has been lost. The, the, the dumpster fire. And Meta Shift Draft League, MSDL. Between Sky Pillar Stadium, weeks one through three, and MSDL, week. F that was week five. Four weeks in a row, I've had a 6 0. That's unheard That's of. That's impressed. Well, not unheard of, week but like for me. <laughs> Yeah, weak flex. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned it was like your first time getting a 6-0, right? Yeah, I've never... Like, you got four in a row. Never gotten one before this stretch run. Like, <laughs> And then press, and then proceeds to get four in a row. The only... The only 6-0 I ever got is no existent. <laughs> so that's a strong flex. It's coming. It's on its way. Hopefully, it's wrapped and it's being shipped out. But I also want to mention, on last week I mentioned that um, it was Bagel Ghost versus Nathan. That was going to be a good game, or that was a game to watch out for. I think it lived up to it. So I think people should check that one out. Oh, Anything? Sure. Bagel I'll Ghost yeah. versus Nathan. I'll link that one in the the description below. And then now we have the coming week. Got Stanny B versus Nathan. They're both undefeated in Lugia right now. Oh no, sorry, Nathan lost one. Okay, but they're still you know, top of the division. And then maybe Thunderbug versus Boot. Thunderbug did show pretty impressive showing last week. Something to watch out for. Which game did you say from last week? It was Nathan versus... Uh, Nathan versus Bagel Ghost. Alright. That you guys covered. Check it out in the link in the description below. Dope. Another interesting yep. one could be Zapdos. We've got Halix versus Nick. Eve Nick. Because that's one versus four. But... Ooh, that's a, that'll be a big matchup. Is Halix one? And Hal yeah, Halix is undefeated. <laughs> Ooh. Still, uh, he's the one that owns one of the Laddie twins. Mm. He owns Lad. He owns Laddie. Uh, Laddie The twins that overthrew the Kuzma. Which is actually the second, uh, the MVP. Uh, I think it was first until the I updated the matches that already happened but like the Laddie twins were on the top and he owns Ladias. Ladios is owned by Pinarska and they are both killing it this season on Zapdos it's really cool watching their games that is pretty cool that is, kind of, that is pretty fun seeing Ladi, Ladias and Ladios both 1 and 2 there and then in Articuno, our other undefeated coach also went down this week. Our Iron Wall lost to Dasa. Iron defense no more. The iron defense has been cracked. He actually... So Dasa actually brought Calm Mind uh, Slowbro. He, he was actually gonna be able to win that 1v1. But then he got crit by body. Yep. I remember that. Oof. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah, but really he bad. did get pretty greedy with it. He did. Know. It wasn't the first time. He got crit by Tooth week one when he was setting up with Comfey. Oh, I remember that. That one was hard to watch. 
That was unfortunate. Yeah, then he lost the match after. But this one, he actually stalled out all the body press PPs. <laughs> and he proceeded to set up plus six with the Snorlax instead <laughs> with, a, with a curse set. That's so so the Snorlax got to plus six. And then, you know, it had rest. Did the Urshifu's close combat did 52. And, uh... I think if, if, I don't know, anything else, he might have actually just lost. I don't know if Wicked Blow would have actually killed it. I doubt Cause it. it broke. Cause, no, because it ignores the defense. It does, but, oh, that's true. It ignores it ignores the boosts. Yeah, that might have, that would have done a chunk. Because it was um, plus three Snorlax. So maybe Wicked Blow would have been the right play. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. If Snorlax was at full HP, I don't know that it would have been much better. Maybe maybe would have gotten like another thirty percent or something like that, but it definitely wouldn't have KO'd. I don't think. Uh, oh well, it would do more. I just counted it. That's true. It would do a lot more. <laughs> oh. Do tell. Mm. So his CC did <clears throat> about fifty six percent. So I'm pretty sure it was just scarfed. Oh no. Oh, it's Adamant Scar. It's Adamant. Or something weird. Yeah, I think it would be Adamant Scar. So he did like 56%. And what could blow this 58 to 68? Wouldn't be. Yeah. Was it? That's significant. It wouldn't have really made much of a difference in the match. I think he was just going off of a crit at that point. Yeah. One thing to look ahead a few weeks down the line. The previous, previously unbeaten triad in Articuno between myself, Tooth, and Barry Ferry. My last two weeks of the season, I faced Barry Ferry followed by Tooth to finish it out. So that's a gauntlet. That'll be tough. That'll be fun. <laughs> be a nice end of the season showdown against Tooth if he's still undefeated. Yeah, that'll be a good game. Give him, give him an opportunity to knock me out of playoffs after I lose a couple of matches. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need a repeat from last season. God, I hear that. I went 2-0 and last season and then proceeded to lose 5 in a row and miss playoffs. <laughs> that was rough. But again, even currently, it's still anybody's playoff run. Mm -hmm. Even if you're 0-4, can still climb back up for sure and that's that's kind of that's that was why at one point that we definitely needed to or felt like we needed to address from last season coming into this season seven weeks is way too short for regular season i think nine is probably that sweet spot where people are engaged throughout they have opportunity to fluctuate in the standings and fight back from an early deficit and it just makes it more exciting so like an early oh and four deficit exactly like an early oh and four you got this You've got this, Elias. You're gonna make it. I'll try my best. Well, I placed your team in first, and I mean, your team is absolutely amazing. I know you. I've played against you like uh, several times, even in back of Yellow Division on season one. Like I know you can make it. It's just gotta believe in yourself. I you just have to not get hacked as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just that don't get well. critted, man. That also helps. Yeah, that helps. Well, if anybody doesn't have anything else to add, we'll... oh, we can shout out uh, Bagel John's trick out. Oh yeah. Plus four. By the way, yeah, I can. I could definitely plug that in the description below as well. Um. For those of you that aren't aware, uh, Trick House is, op is running their second tournament now with a cash prize pool. Last I checked, it was at $420. Woo! It's actually currently at 469 points. Did you say 0.69? Wow. Yeah. Somebody donated like 69 cents extra for that. The imagination. 
Nice. <laughs> you can you can donate one more cent to ruin the magic. <laughs> actually, <laughs> do you could do that. Actually, don't do. Actually, don't do that because John is gonna be mad at me. <laughs> so don't do that. And if you do, I didn't give the idea. I think there's no reason for people to do it now. <laughs> yeah, you can join the Trick House store. Right. So, yeah. Um, and we may link that in the description below as well. Um, I'll talk to John. We'll get that figured out. We can, we can link something for that. Um, but yeah, all you gotta do is join their Discord, apply. Uh, I think they're gonna have like some 256 people playing, something ridiculous like that. Brackets playing into brackets. Um, yeah, should be a good time. With that, I think uh, that'll do it. I want to thank you all for taking time out of your lovely holidays to join us in the Sky Pillar and tuning into Episode 8 of the Sit Down. And we'll see you next week, hopefully. Thanks for joining, guys. Bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry and Christmas. Happy Friday. See you all again, eventually. Happy Hanukkah. Bye. Have so much fun, Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs>